Fight 728. Another teen is dead and four more injured after police say a shooting erupted following a football scrimmage just outside of Roxborough High School. Parents and police say reacted with shock while also once again pushing for change. I want to say that I, I was sad to hear the news, but it's something that's happening all around the city. It's, it's getting out of control, so it wasn't uncommon to get a phone call like that. Just wasn't something that you wanted to hear. I, I don't know who's missing the conversation, um, but, but we just have to keep doing as much as we possibly can. Uh, because again, this, this, at this point, you just couldn't, we, don't, we don't need to keep having these conversations. And, and, and something needs to be, something has to stop. And we're gonna work together to figure that out, but it has to be immediate because this can't continue. Uh, District Attorney Larry Krasner joins us now live in studio here. It has to stop and it has to be immediate. I think the entire city would agree with uh, Deputy Commissioner Stanford there. Uh, I, we've had it. I mean, the city has had it. So we want you, Mayor Kenny, and Commissioner Outlaw to do something about it. You know, I was at the location. Uh, shortly after the shooting, I was there for quite some time, and I have to tell you, it is one of the most heartbreaking cases that we have seen because we expect our schools to be that safe place where young people go to do things that are constructive, to play football like every one of these victims did, to be in classes like they were because you have to do that to play football. And when you see kids who are leaving the football field and they're gunned down, and they're between 14 and 17 years of age. It's just absolutely heartbreaking. I, I completely share the grief of that principal, the families, the neighborhood, the entire city. This is a horrifying situation. Um, and I totally agree with you that all of government has to be on the same page, and so does all of community. We have to be in a position to work with our faith leaders and to work with our community activists, our community organizations, which we do as much as we possibly can. And I have to tell you, I think that um, that so does PPD and so does ATF, which was out there yesterday. But it doesn't seem to be working. We have a terrible crisis in this country when it comes to gun violence. I don't have good news for you, but I will tell you that the number of homicides this day last year was more. We are a little bit down. Uh, there is a leveling after two years of, of going up very significantly, and we're seeing that all over the country. As the pandemic is shutting down, things are getting a little better, but there's a lesson here. The lesson is that we were in a shaky position when the pandemic hit and we should have had a lot more money into things like football, into things like public school, into the things that are necessary for prevention that are constructive. That is the path forward in addition to cutting edge enforcement. And I've got to tell you, without getting specific, some of the investigative things that are being done in this case are pretty revolutionary and they're pretty wonderful. It's something the city has needed for a long time. So. That's the path. The path is cutting edge enforcement coupled with a serious investment in prevention. That is what okay. we're... So, so when it comes to that, because in, in the same vein of, of what happened yesterday, Mayor Kinney uh, made his announcement about executive order when it comes to banning guns at rec centers, which is a place where our young people go. We've had more than 200 gun incidents since 2019 around or near rec centers. Do you agree with this step? Do you think this is a move in the right direction? And are you committing to prosecuting folks if they are charged with having a gun near a rec Center. Yes and yes. I, I totally agree and we are committed to prosecuting. What it basically says is whether you got a permit or not, don't bring that gun onto uh, these city properties. I think it's an excellent idea. We will fully enforce it. You know, we just had an arrest a couple days ago of a guy named Fahim Key who shot and paralyzed a man over a disagreement in a basketball game while that other man was walking away. That's yeah. what actually happened. Okay. Um, but, but you know what, we don't, the most important thing is this, we do not just want to be prosecuting people after the crime. We want to stop the crime from happening and mm -hmm. save that victim's life. Yeah. Um, there's some folks in Harrisburg want to impeach you. Uh, we'll talk about that after this is the Select Committee on Restoring Law and Order, and it was formed in July in response to the rising crime rate. Uh, it consists of three Republicans and two Democrats. The committee's job is to look at all aspects of law enforcement in Philadelphia and the city's use of law enforcement funding. It can then make recommendations for removal from office or other appropriate discipline. As part of the committee's investigation, a subpoena was issued to Larry Krasner, District Attorney of Philadelphia, for documents. They say he refused to comply with that subpoena. 
and the House voted 162 to 38 to hold him in contempt. Joining Republicans in the vote were 49 Democrats, including 10 from here in Philadelphia. Were you surprised by that? So let's get it straight. Number one, you can't impeach someone for their policies or their ideas. That has never happened in the history of the Commonwealth. It is illegal. Number two, a subpoena was issued to us that asked me to commit a crime, a crime. And that crime was to reveal secret grand jury notes of testimony, which is exactly how Kathleen Kane ended her career as a prosecutor and went to jail. I am a law enforcement officer. I'm not going to commit a crime. So when they did that, I went to court about 10 or 12 days before this shenanigan, which was contempt, and I filed a legal action, which is what you do. If you, if you just look at your memory bank on what's going on nationally, anytime there's a subpoena challenge, it goes to court. But this Republican-led MAGA effort didn't like it. So what they did is they misinformed both on the facts and the law and they went and they got this contempt finding. The whole time that was going on, my lawyers were banging on the door saying, let Krasner talk and explain they're trying to get him to commit a crime. Let him talk and explain that he's filed a 45 page brief so judges so can decide. So we'll have this. to wait. Well, hold that. on a second, let okay. me finish. And they stopped it. They would not let me in the room to say those things. This is a MAGA effort to erase Philadelphia. What documents vote. are they looking for? They are looking for secret grand jury notes of testimony. It is a crime to provide them. They're also trying to get in the middle of the entire case file for a murder case that we are taking uh, to trial on November the 7th. They can't do that. The third thing that they wanted, they mostly already had. They wanted a bunch of policies that have been posted on our website for the entire world for a long time. They knew they were there. We told them they were there. They said they knew they were there. They wanted those, and then they wanted a few others, which we have already provided. This whole notion that we didn't respond is a lie, just like the notion that you can impeach somebody for his policies is a lie. But the interesting thing is, because you're saying it's GOP-led, and you've been saying it's MAGA-led, but there are 10 Democrats who voted for this process to move forward. The truth is the Democrats were misled. They were told false facts that I had ignored a subpoena. That's a lie. They were never told it was an illegal subpoena. They were misled on the facts, and they were also misled on the notion that you can have a committee to impeach somebody for their policies. If we do that, we end democracy. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's get real. <clears throat> if you can erase an election because people in Beaver County don't like what Philly did, which is exactly what's going on here, then there is no elected official in Philadelphia or Pittsburgh who is safe from MAGA Republicans in Beaver County. We do have some uh, t uh, comments from viewers. Ma Malcolm in the control room, could you put up one of those there? Uh, Let's see here. Uh, ask Larry Krasner about his impeachment hearing, which we just did on Thursday Friday. You can also ask him why he keeps letting juveniles back out on the street with gun charges only to end up murdering people. Please ask him some of these questions. So, uh, D.A. Krasner, I think you have a perception problem. There is this perception in this city that the reason for all this gun violence is you. Well, I, I don't, and I, I'll tell you why I don't. There was an election, it happened in November. We took more than two thirds of all Democrats and 72% of the city. There are people who want to put out the idea that there's a perception problem, but the reason we're going through this is they know they cannot defeat these ideas in a, an election. The areas of the city where we had the highest levels of support, we're talking like 80, 84% levels of support, were the areas most affected by gun violence because they believe in what we're trying to do, which is a combination why, of modern why? Why is that prevention. perception there? You have to admit it's there. Uh, uh, every cop I talk to says it's 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 too it's a too lenient district attorney. Uh, the perception is there for political reasons and only within certain communities. As I said, maybe they could explain why I'm getting 84 percent support in areas that are most affected by gun violence. Those areas have not been helped by doing things like it was still 1954. Yeah. They are looking for help and they're looking for it the way that we are going. But when it comes to also cases, Overall, we know when it comes to cases that have been withdrawn or dismissed, according to your website, 65% of all cases have been withdrawn or dismissed. When it comes to gun possession, 49% of them withdrawn or dismissed. And then 66% of violent offense cases have been withdrawn or dismissed. Do you think that that's what people are referring to then? They feel like it's not being prosecuted, they're, people are not being held to task? So I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the data. The fact is our conviction rate for homicide cases when we get to trial is nearly 90%. It is higher 
than my predecessors, and we're doing it without lying, cheating, stealing, and putting innocent people in jail. So it I guess is we're talking about the cases the, actually make it to that. It is, it is all, yeah, that, that's true, and it's also true that we have an extremely high rate of cases getting there. The reality is that a lot of people don't understand what this means. When a judge says, well, there was an illegal search in this case, or two police witnesses have not showed up, which just happened the other day, they may throw the case out, then it's listed as dismissed. It's very simple then for people to say, oh, that's somebody's fault, let's figure out who. The whole system has to work together. When you have illegal searches, and we have a lot of them, that needs to be fixed. When you have officers who are at home are not coming to work as a result of problems with our heart and lung system, that's a problem. There are multiple things going on in the system, but it has never been the case before until we had reform prosecutors where people tried to blame just one entity. We all have to work together, and the reality is that we have been more and effective. And you are a reform district attorney. Everybody, everybody in the country knows that, but maybe it's not working. It is working. The reality is that There's our There's a thousand people killed in 20 months. The, it is working. The reality is, when you look at all these different jurisdictions, we've had a devastating blow from the pandemic, and there is absolutely no correlation between being progressive or traditional and the rate of crime. These states in the United States that have a rate of homicide that is 40% higher are MAGA states. They are Trump states. I'll say it again. The rate of homicide in Trump states, as compared to Biden states, take all 50 of them, is 40% You know higher. Republicans say the opposite. It's all the blue Republicans cities Republicans lie. It. I mean, let's just get down to it. Republicans lie. That is what they do. Eight of not the 10 cities with not, not, well, okay, that's right. Not all of them do, but the MAGA ones do. Eight out of 10 of the most violent cities are Trump cities. Like, we gotta get real about this. Facts matter. Law so matters. the perception we have to about that. you is there, and I, I still say the perception is there, right or wrong, uh, D.A. Krasner, maybe for a fresh start, resign. That, is, that doesn't even cross your mind, does it? No, because the fact is Philadelphia voted for me over overwhelmingly because they want what we are doing and the when, you, when you bring change, change excuse slide, me yes. may i finish when you bring change the reality is that there are certain entities who don't want change they're making a pretty good living off of doing things the old way the nra doesn't like me because i speak the truth about the nra our governor has tried his entire term to pass four different things to bring gun safety the republicans won't do it mm. and they need something and somebody to blame this is a, this is very old republican politics so even if this is the case, and then, and, and of course, we're saying you did win uh, by Lensa, of course, and you were voted back in, how do you work then with the folks who may not agree with your policy? Because if somebody has to come together so we can make this happen, yep. how do we get more, right. more on board with police? How do we make sure the officers are, are showing up? How do we have to make sure that they feel that they'll be backed up once they investigate these crimes and, and get this moving? How do we get that to come together then? It's, it's very simple. You have an even-handed approach and you treat everybody equally. The reality is that we have an extremely solid relationship with police officers who are righteous and who do things the right way. And that is the vast majority of police officers. But I'm not gonna make excuses for police officers who fake illness and stay home. And we have far more of them than we've ever had in the history of the city. We have cases being thrown out because some of them don't show up. There is nobody who hates a dirty cop more than a good cop. And we are here 100% for those good cops who work hard every day and who show up. But we're not going to have a city where we're, where backing up the police means you make excuses for their criminal conduct. We're going to yeah, have a city that restores the relationship between community and police, community and too. prosecution. Uh, people aren't showing up. The witnesses aren't showing up in front of the judge. The cops, some of them, are not showing up in front of the judge. But some say it's also lack of money for witness protection well, and they don't yeah, feel protected. We need more money for that. Witness protection. I totally agree with that, and that, that's why we've been so vigorous about asking for it. And to city council's credit, they have uh, recently and last year, they've yep. come up Let's with more of that money. It's very important. And also another thing being said, though, um, District Attorney Krasner, <clears throat> that folks are saying that there's not enough experienced uh, people in your office because they say that a lot of the veterans were, they left or they were dismissed, and then the people are coming in, that they aren't experienced enough or that, you know, they're not able to handle all this. Your response to that? Uh, you know, I think there are some people who equate experience with the quality of the work. If you're playing baseball and you're batting 150 and you've been there 10 years, that does not make you better than the person who's been there three years and is batting 335. We have some of the most talented attorneys in the country, frankly. We went all over the country to get them. They're doing a hell of a job, and this is part of the reason that our conviction rate on homicides is so very high. Yeah. Um,
Do you think it was a mistake to get rid of those from the, like Seth Williams era? I mean, you cleaned house when you came in. Uh, I mean, we got rid of 5% of the office. We kept 95%. I guess you could yeah. call that cleaning house. No, I think that the people who were dismissed were dismissed okay. for good reasons. And I think we have brought in tremendous talent ever since. Mr. Mm -hmm. DA, thank you for coming in. Thank yes, you so thank much. You. Great got to it. see you both.